We welcome you to Clemson, South Carolina tonight, where the Tigers play their final non-conference weekend of the season, welcoming in Jacksonville to Little John Coliseum. And alongside Matt Doherty, I'm Jordan Burnfield. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Well, Matt, Clemson has lost four in a row. They really need a win. It's been an uneven start to the season because of injury. But guess who's back? Clyde Trapp. He tore his ACL six months ago and will return is active tonight. Well, Clyde Trapp will give Clemson a steadying influence. They've really struggled against pressure. Freshman Alamir Dawes has six turnovers in their last game to South Carolina, so they, they, they can look to Trapp to give them that steadying influence, not only in offense, but the pick and roll defense on the ball. Well, Clemson's getting a little healthier, but Jacksonville will be missing their big man in the middle tonight. This is a Dolphins team that has won four of its last five, but Dave Bell, word is, he's going to be out tonight, their center. That's a big blow because he averages a double-double and is a rim protector, a legitimate rim protector. He is an ACC quality big man, so without him, it, everything will fall onto the shoulders of Bryce Workman. Bryce Workman in that starting lineup tonight, the sophomore from Tampa, the son of former NBA veteran Haywood Workman. So we'll see what he's got in the starting role tonight. Clemson seeking its first win in the month of December is the opening tip won by the hometown Tigers, and away we go here at the Little John Coliseum. Clemson will start with the ball first after their last game was a loss against their rival South Carolina last week. And the first bucket of the game is good for Amir Sims. Amir Sims can step out. He's really a stretch five. Uh, started last year, has uh, played a lot last year, more as a power forward. So he's very versatile and, and can do that. For this Jacksonville team, we mentioned they've won four of their last five, including two straight. Got a win over Presbyterian earlier this week, and have played real good basketball of late. But without Dave Bell, we'll see how their offense moves. He averages a double-double, second on the team in scoring, and their leading rebounder, averaging a double-double so far this season. What are you looking for here early from Clemson? I'm really looking right there. They want to get Sims going on the pick and pops. And how does Jacksonville guard that? I think the silver lining um, with the loss of uh, Bell is that Workman can get out and contest a little bit quicker than Bell can. And now a shot from the wing from Amani Santos. No good. The redshirt senior. Clemson, after Sims put five straight points on Jacksonville to start, gets the ball in the post. Goes to work on Workman, misses with the left hand and grabs the rebound. Curran Scott getting the start in this one tonight. And now a three try from the top of the key off target from Alamir Dawes, the freshman from Newark, who's still starting tonight, even with Clyde Trapp set to return. Has had some turnover issues, which you mentioned, Matt, but he's had a real nice start as a freshman kind of thrown into the fire for Clemson. That's a lot of pressure for a freshman to come in and start regardless, uh, even if you're, you're one of the top players in the country, but for a guy who wasn't expected to start to come in and play against some of the quality teams like TCU in Colorado, USC, it's a lot of pressure. and He's turned the ball over against Florida State and um, South Carolina. Draw is third on the team in scoring, leader in assists as Tevin Mack goes in strong but can't find the rim. And a rebound to Workman. And now another three from the corner. That's off target from DeAnthony McCallum. John Newman knocks down the long two. Right there, you saw Jacksonville likes to go under pick and rolls. Okay, so the fact that Newman made that jump shot, it'll be interesting to see if Jacksonville makes any adjustments. Kevin Norman knocks down another three. He's hit two triples here early. Norman, the junior transfer from Angelina College, where he was a big time scorer there. A nice start for the night for Jacksonville, and then Clemson answers right back with Newman. Oh, oh, oh. 
As Destin Barnes, junior out of Chicago, feeding up top. That three try from Norman, no good, but Bryce Workman grabs the rebound. Bryce Workman made a big jump this summer. The coaches are raving about his work ethic. That time misses with the hook underneath. Workman, the sophomore out of Tampa. Coaches love his summer, as you mentioned. And now current scout three try. And the rebound to Norman. We're seeing what typical small ball is now. Uh, a five out on both sides of the floor. Some four out, one in. There's Norman going for another three. This time he can't get it to fall. There is Tevin Mack. There's a three. Tevin Mack, the graduate transfer from Alabama who began his career at Texas. He's a talented young man, can really jump. If he starts shooting the ball like that on a consistent basis with he and Newman, they have two legitimate ACC wing players. Newman with the foul, and it brings us to a timeout. But coming up, how the Tigers have left their paw prints in the community. ACC Network Basketball is brought to you by Food Lion, the official grocer of the ACC. Well, in the spirit of the holiday season, the Clemson men's basketball team hosted their annual Tiger Wonderland event last Thursday the 12th. They hosted over 30 area children from the Clemson Community Care to make sure that they had an opportunity to have a special holiday season. It's a local organization that provides assistance, basic needs such as food, shelter, and utility for area families in need. And the organization has worked with Clemson basketball to provide that list, get the kids to work with them, and they're playing games, having fun, giving them gifts, sharing a meal with them. Really wonderful opportunity. And Matt, you ask any of the players or coaches about Tiger Wonderland, and they only say glowing things about it. Well, it's neat. It's it not only neat for uh, the kids who, who are getting the gifts, but I think when you see the men's and women's basketball teams working together in the community, it, it brings the athletes together and makes them realize how good they do have it. They certainly have a wonderful gesture that they are able to provide with those kids and getting to work one-on-one -on -one with them. And so second foul there on Newman here early on. And Kevin Norman has shot the ball well for Jacksonville here in the early going. And he's not a great shooter. He's a 27% three-point shooter, but boy, oh boy, is he coming in with great confidence. Norman with 10 now. And that's all 10 for Jacksonville. Three in the foul, you'll take that any time, but he's hit three triples here in the early going, averaging just over eight and a half points a game on the season. Well, a three try to try to answer for Clemson, that's missed. The offensive rebound and a fresh shot clock for Dawes to hoist from deep, and he can't get that one to fall. Deontay Wood the rebound, the transfer from Alabama. Now Bryce Workman off target with that jumper out of bounds. It'll be Clemson basketball. That's not the shot that the Jacksonville coaches want. Just because you're open doesn't mean it's a good shot. Uh, the thing you have to look for on the other end, when, when there are three-point shots taken, long shots means long, long rebounds. And sometimes players have a habit of going towards the basket, but they really need to stay out of the three-point line to box their shooters off the board. Dawes on a three. That time Norman underneath to grab the rebound. Just saw Tony Jasic, the sixth-year head coach of Jacksonville. And has a team that he feels like can do some real damage in the A-Sun this year. Tyson on the wing. That three tried too strong. Kayvon Moore was able to grab it, but it's out of bounds. 19 to shoot. Clemson will keep. 
Notice the ball screen defense. They go under. The big drops, they go under. They're daring you to make the three. The coaching staff believes that it's a tough, tough shot to shoot a three off the dribble. The other thing, it, it doesn't encourage ball movement, so the other players may get a little frustrated with guys that are jacking up threes behind ball screens. Something to watch for in this game for sure. Tony Jasek talking about that before the game today. On the drive there, Tyson the miss. And it's picked up by Amani Santos. I like Santos in transition. He can push it. His head is always up looking for the open man. And to shoot now for Jacksonville. Santos trying to throw it across the court, and it's stolen away by Current Scott. It's fun to see Trap out there. Let's see how he handles the rust. Now there is Clyde Trap. He's at the top of the key. Scott on the drive, and he's fouled. And that'll be on Destin Barnes. There is Clyde Trapp back in the lineup for Clemson. Of course, didn't get the start tonight, but Matt, it's pretty amazing. This guy tore his ACL six months ago. He's, and he's an back on the court. He's an amazing athlete. Look at him. Big and strong and obviously was committed to the recovery. The toughest thing about coming back from an injury like an ACL is the, the work you have to put in. I mean, it's painful work. And then the mental challenge of staying positive and not getting down the lonely times or in the training room working on those machines to get better he's a mature kid i had a, a really nice talk with him before the game great to see him back out there that's been one of the things that has bogged down clemson and why their start has been uneven this season because they've been dealing with several injuries jonathan bear who tore his knee up about the same time as clyde trap actually returned a little bit earlier but he's not playing tonight Chase Hunter is out as well. He's been dealing with a foot injury for Clemson. A combination of factors has not allowed Brad Brownell to have his normal lineup out there in any of their practices. As that one tipped in. And Tyson actually tipped that in for Jacksonville. The rotations were a little late. What Jacksonville wants to do is change sides of the floor with the basketball, stretch Clemson's defense, and then attack off the dribble. Now here's Trap. Here's the pick and roll. See how they went under. And that one taken away from Trey Jemison. Mo Arnold, the freshman, they're really high on him. Pick out Destin Barnes and a missed three. One of the focal points of the scouting report was getting out to Barnes, making him put the ball down from the three-point line, make him a driver. Don't let him spot up and shoot. He can make threes. He's made five threes in a couple of games already this year. Now current Scott will hoist from three, no. And the rebound comes out and Trey Sides picks it up. Rushman for Jacksonville. Yeah, they swing it side to side, five out. Open post and they can tap off the dribble. And it's a travel though by Deontay Wood. Tacked off the dribble but turns it over. Jacksonville staying in it here. Hunter Tyson, little help. Dolphins trailing by three. Three-point lead for Clemson over Jacksonville. And nothing but net every Sunday. That's our weekly basketball studio show. We'll preview the week. Look back at the best games from last week. Highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide. This week's show, 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Probably some more on Clyde Trapp, who's back in the lineup for the first time tonight for Clemson. Matt, when you think about how different this Clemson team is from a season ago, you know, Marquise Reed, Elijah Thomas, Shelton Mitchell, David Scarra, all have moved on or graduated. And so Clyde Trapp was the second leading returning scorer at six points per game. Yeah, no, it's a big blow. Uh, they expected 
Clyde to start, obviously, and also, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Bear to start. And so you, you're out with two players. And how does that impact you? Well, obviously scoring, but it also impacts your practices. How do you play in practice? What's the competition like in practice? You have to promote walk-ons. And all of a sudden, the walk-ons play significant roles in, the, in, a, um, in your practice. So it, it's not as challenging in a practice setting. And there is Clyde Trapp with his first bucket of the season for the Tigers. Callum thought about the shot, now kicks it out. Norman goes inside, Workman five to shoot for the Dolphins. Down to two, Arnold at the end of the shot clock, and they avoid the violation. Love the floater under control. That's a tough shot. I never liked to teach that as a coach. The only <laughs> time you wanted him to shoot that ball really was end of clock situations. But now every guard has to have that in his repertoire. Was that one of those where you go no, 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 and then when it goes in you say of course. It depends. Why did you shoot that? It, it depends. Clyde, <laughs> I, Clyde, I'd let him glide with that one. I like that. His current Scott glides to the hoop. He's got four early points. Seven point advantage. For Clemson. There's Mo Arnold on the wing for three off target. Both teams have shot a good amount of threes here early on. Jacksonville three of 11 while yep. Clemson is three of 10. And underneath Hunter Tyson gets the easy two. And Tony Jasek will take time out as Clemson extends the lead to nine. Brings us to a timeout on the floor where the Tigers on a 6-0 run. There's Clyde Trapp and his Clemson Tigers wearing the brace on that knee, but has moved around pretty well so far. Look at his vision, and I like the one hand pass off the dribble. That's something that wasn't happening. Easy baskets. They've struggled in the past to get easy baskets with his vision and size and that skill level be able to pass off the dribble like that guys are going to cut harder you mentioned it Clyde Trapp and Jonathan Bear if you'd ask Brad Brownell and May who would your starting guards be that's who it would have been as McCallum knocks down the triple but because of their injuries Clemson has had to improvise and Matt I would imagine as a coach, you think, well, you never want this to happen, but it gives other guys opportunities, and maybe it makes you a deeper team later in the season. Yeah, that's what you and I can say, but as a head coach. <laughs> right. You still don't want it. Oh, no, yeah. man. <laughs> I'll deal with deeper working on my depth in practice not, or against low major teams, but not, not due to injury. Absolutely. As Kevin Norman picks up the foul. Brad Brownell has had to improvise so far this year. Jordan, there's a rash of injuries, I think, throughout college basketball and definitely in the ACC. Cole Anthony, obviously, is out for four to six weeks. And it's something we can talk about. But I think the, the specialization and also the size and athleticism of these kids nowadays creates more injuries than it has 20, 30 years ago. How do you mean? Well, I just think the specialization, they overuse the, the, uh, their muscles. Um, and they're playing year-round. Right when they go from high school, they play AAU ball, and they AAU through the summer, and they're playing three games a day for yeah. three or four straight days. There's really not much of a, a break, and I think their bodies are so big and strong, it puts a lot of stress on their uh, their joints. Very interesting to think about. That, of course, didn't used to be the case, but now everyone's playing their sport all year as Jacksonville turns it over. Destin Barnes. If I'm Jacksonville, I'm heating up Dawes because um, that can be done by Santos, who's a really strong, quick guard, and Dawes struggle with pressure. So when he's at the point, I would get all over the ball. Nice job by Santos to get in the passing lane there, but knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Clemson. Current Scott will trigger it in. 
One thing they've gone away from is Sims. He started out the game two or three. Yeah. I don't think he's really gotten a shot since then. Scored the first five points for Clemson. There he is there to knock down the three. Huh? How about that, Jordan? Matt Jordan? not my first rodeo, Jordan. <laughs> it is not. You predicted that beautifully. <laughs> What do you think's happening here, Nostradamus? <laughs> here, pick and roll defense, it's critical. You've got to be able to guard it multiple ways because you have to make adjustments coming out of timeouts. Did you think McCallum was gonna hit that three? I, I did, I did. I just didn't want to I didn't want to show off, Jordan. <laughs> McCallum now with six points for the Dolphins. Current Scott goes for the answer and drills the triple. This is entertaining ball. Now a timeout taken by Brad Brownell. Clemson gets the lead back to nine. I love this. Great angle, off the dribble, no look, money. Well, our next All Access with Carolina Basketball, that's Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Your unprecedented All Access Pass gets you never-before-seen footage and sounds from UNC practices, workouts, games, other team-related activities. Maybe a photo of Matt Doherty somewhere <laughs> while they're walking around the facility in North Carolina. There are a couple. I'm sure Coach Williams really loves the access. Uh, no, most coaches really don't, but it's a necessary evil nowadays. If you were a player, though, I feel like you'd probably like it. Oh, I'd be all over Twitter. Yeah. I'd be on Twitter at halftime. I'd be questioning Coach Smith's decisions <laughs> for not letting me shoot the ball more. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'd be, like, looking, looking to transfer. Yeah. But you wouldn't be going into the transfer portal. They'd be sending you there. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Out of the timeout, here's Amir Sims turning around on Workman, and that's a nice touch. That's a big-time move. When you can go either shoulder in the post, then it really makes it tough scouting because as a coach, as an assistant coach, you say, okay, he likes to go left shoulder jump hook. If you can go back to the right shoulder like that, step away with a little fade, it's tough to get to that shot. That's, that's an NBA-type move. Amir Sims with a good start to this one tonight, 10 points. For the Tigers. Really a clean game so far. Not a lot of fouls. Not a lot of turnovers, especially by Clemson. Trying to shoot now for Jacksonville. Here's Santos hoisting from way out. And Mack grabs the rebound. Dawes goes to work. Tyson lost the handle. And McCallum draws the blocking foul. Sims got back down the floor there quickly, though. Sims can run. He, he's, he's an athlete. He can really get up and down the floor. He's got big-time skills. He can hand the ball in transition. Uh, again, he's got a chance to play in the NBA. The junior, who is a near double-double on most nights. And McCallum hits the first free throw. Sims, a guy averaging 12 points, eight rebounds per game. Second in scoring on this Clemson team and first in rebounding. Coming off a 21.8 rebound effort against South Carolina despite the loss. McCallum, one more free throw here. Good start to the game for DeAnthony, eight points for the Dolphins. Here's the pick and roll defense. Go under. Line trap too strong on the jumper. That's That shot's too easy for him. I, I think if I'm Clemson, I'm going to try to do that again and see if we can get trapped that foul line pull-up jumper and then force Jacksonville to have to make an adjustment. That's the chess match within the game, the game within the game. Arnold goes inside Workman, but threw it too long for him, and he tipped it out of bounds. Terrible post feed. You've got to get that ball to the wing and throw that ball into the post so the big doesn't have to give up real estate. Fifth Jacksonville turnover. Here 
Raiders trapped on the floor with Dawes. Now they went under that pick. They went over that pick and roll. And now Sims on the drive and draws the foul. That's a concern of Jacksonville was the pick and pop by Sims and Sims catching it and driving the basket puts it puts a lot of pressure on the big here here we go here comes the pick by Sims he pops they throw it back to him now the, the five man has to close out workman not a comfortable position for him Sims is really good at putting that ball on the floor with either hand and uh, drawing the foul Near steal by Arnold, but current Scott able to keep. In the corner, here's Dawes. Sinks the triple. I love those two in the backcourt together because Dawes can really shoot it. Now with Trap handling the ball, it takes a lot of pressure off of Dawes. He can just run around, run to the corners, and catch and shoot versus trying to set up his teammates. And Dawes, a heralded recruit. And he's 95th in the ESPN Top 100. And Kevin Mack rejects that shot. And now on the second opportunity, that one falls through for Workman. Now Trap pulls up for a three from the wing. That's off target. Out of bounds off of Tevin Mack. 10-point lead for Clemson. Here we see Trap handling the ball. Look at Dawes. He's just running the baseline wide open. Money. Well, not many know more about the ACC than Mark Packer and West Durham and Monday at 8 Eastern. They will take you through the last decade with the top games, players, and plays. Packer and Durham Decade in Review Show right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. There are a lot of great basketball memories in this decade for the ACC. It's, it's been a pretty good decade, yeah. as was the decade before that, the and decade before that, the decade before that. And I think the decade before that, George. Right. What we're saying is the ACC is good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, re really every sport, but certainly in basketball, they have had some multiple championships in this decade. As Destin Barnes knocks one down from deep. First basket for Destin Barnes, who came in the leading scorer for Jacksonville with 11 and a half points per game. The Clemson coaches are frustrated because the focal point of their scouting report was chase him off the three-point line. He got a clean look. Here's Jemison inside, gets the roll and the foul. Well, that's where you miss on the defensive end. That's where Jacksonville misses Bell because right with Bell in the post there, that's probably a block shot. Here's the pick and roll. The weak side needs to come over quicker. 21 needs to come over more and get him outside the circle, maybe even get a hand on the ball. They play a pack line defense, which is a lot like Virginia, right? Where they're forcing you to make open threes, contested threes. So when the ball gets in the paint, there should be a crowd there. And Jacksonville talked about that in shoot around today. They want, they want Clemson to play in a the crowd. There. They were late on the rotation. And it works out for Trey Jemison, the sophomore from Birmingham, who completes the three-point play. Tell you what, I think Dabo Sweeney would like Jemison on the football field. That is a big dude, and he's put together. Yeah, imagine him as a receiver at seven feet tall. Receiver, defensive end, yeah. tight end. Barnes, that's off target. That's what they want to do to Barnes, make him shoot mid-range jumpers over a hand. They chased him off the three-point line there. That's good scouting report defense. Well, Dustin Barnes, when he is shooting threes, he is hitting threes. He's hit five threes in a game three times this year, but he's had a number of games where he's been held off the three-point score sheet. So when he's, when he's hitting them, he's hitting them. That's called a streak shooter. And now McCallum, the miss on the layup try. And it's kept in by Jacksonville and a foul drawn by Deontay Wood. 
Amir Sims picking up number two. Did you say when the shot's going in, it's going in? Was that? Did you just say that? Was that? Did you learn that at the, the Syracuse? This is the Media infinite School? wisdom that I that I provide here. Matt. When they're going in, they're going in. Is it Yogi Berra? Did he say that? <laughs> I, did he say? I mean, he said a lot of yeah. very wise things. <laughs> when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Take it. Yeah, yeah. No one goes there anymore. It's too crowded. <laughs> <laughs> Deontay Wood knocks down the free throw. You're, you know, you're not the only Jordan I've worked with. I've uh, carried another Jordan before in my previous life. I've heard about that. Yeah. He's slightly more talented than me. Yeah, I've got a, a little more work to do with you. Devin Mitchell, the jumper off target. And Moore saves it right to Destin Barnes. Here's a three try for Santos, too strong. See, long shots, long rebounds, so you can't box out to the paint. You've got to box out to the three-point line. Yep. That one knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Clemson. I, when I was coaching in North Carolina, Joe Forte was a good player for us, and we played Duke. Duke shot a lot of threes, and I made them box out to the three-point line. Joe Forte, I think, against Duke at Duke had 16 rebounds in a game because of all those long rebounds, and he was very quick to the ball. Here's steal by Santos, but current Scott runs it down. There's the kick. There's Matt off on the three-track. That's a great, the wood. great box out by Jacksonville. McCallum, beautiful pass underneath to Deontay Wood. That's why you run the floor. You want to score attack while the defense is unset. One of the hardest things to teach as a coach is transition defense. And this time, Mack loses the handle, but somehow able to save it back for Clemson. Now 10 to shoot for the Tigers. Trap. And Moore couldn't get that one for a third try. I'll tell you what, Jacksonville plays hard. You got to give them a lot of credit. I love, they are making Clemson now play in the crowd. They're swarming the ball when it gets inside the three-point line, especially inside the lane. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Jacksonville, a pretty different team, just like Clemson is from a year ago. They lost J.D. Note, transferred to Arkansas. Jace Hogan graduated. Also, Jalen Hinton, the transfer out. And that's the end of the shot clock and a violation. But Jacksonville feels like they've got a little better chemistry this year. They feel like things are working out for them. They feel like they can have a real good year. Yeah, the great box out right there by, by number 20. 22 Deontay Wood then they run the floor I mean that's that's beautiful basketball he should be rewarded because of his box out and rebound and that's good karma trap now in the post against Santos he's got a bit of a height advantage but Santos with good defense to knock it out and they're going to say it's off trap it's Jacksonville ball that's Boston Strong right there. I tell you what, I like Omani Santos. He played for the BABC AAU team in Boston. Leo Papil. Leo Papil runs that program, is also a longtime scout for the Boston Celtics. There's some tough players that come out of Boston, and he's one of them. And now they're going to give the ball back to Clemson after conferring with the officials. So 11 seconds to shoot. Good piece of officiating. You got a good crew here with Mike Eads, Lucas L, and Spearman, Mel Spearman. And Tevin Mack puts it in. So multiple opportunities, but it results in a Clemson bucket. They've got a nine point lead. Three seconds left in the half. Santos, no. And that'll do it for the first half of play here in Clemson. The Tigers have a nine point lead over Jacksonville. They lead it 37 to 28. Brad Brownell's got to feel pretty good. Coming up after the break, we'll check in with Mark Packer and West Durham. They'll discuss Roy Williams' outlook on scheduling in today's ACC.
Great shot of Cooper Library here at Clemson where the Tigers have a 37 to 28 lead here inside Little John Coliseum and alongside Matt Doherty I'm Jordan Burnfield. Matt we knew going into this game that Clyde Trapp's return for Clemson was going to be a big deal for the Tigers and so far he's made an impact on this game. Clyde Trapp makes it easy for his teammates. Watch him with the floater first. Makes it easy. Now what he really does is move the ball and find guys. Off the dribble, no look to Hunter for the layup. Hunter Tyson, and then he swings the ball to the open man for Dawes. Makes it easy. Now we go to Mr. Inside and Out. Sims, pick and pop three. Gets the ball in a low post. Right shoulder turnaround jumper with a little fade. And again for another pick and pop three. He's a legitimate NBA prospect. And Amir Sims so far, 10 points in this game as a rebound as well. But for Clyde Trapp, two points, two assists, played nine minutes and 13 seconds on that surgically repaired knee. And he looks like he's running pretty well. He's cutting well. Well, I've talked to him before the game. I said, any, any, any issues, any hesitancy? He said, no, I've been practicing for a couple months. He said, lately... Full, full practice, full go. He says the only issue is the brace. The brace is cumbersome. Uh, nobody likes playing with a brace like that, but he has utmost confidence in his knee. Brad Brownell said this morning, every step of the process for Clyde Trapp, he's passed with flying colors. He has not had any real issues in his recovery and has worked really hard to get back on the floor. It's amazing. Six months, and here he is. In the corner, there's Kevin Norman off target on a three. He was really hot early in this game at 10 points, but his last field goal came at the 15-04 mark of the first half. You notice defensively, Clemson didn't double down on the post. They let Sims handle it one-on-ones. That way they can stay at home on the shooters. Eight seconds to shoot now for Clemson. They go inside to Sims. Against the double, two seconds, one, Newman at the buzzer, and two short on the three. That's an area of the game I'd like to see Sims do better, scoring in the post. And that time he swaps one away from Norman. And against the double, three seconds in the key. Sim Here comes Sims running the floor. When you have a big man that can run the floor, Norman didn't see... Sims coming from behind. He thought he had an open layup. And Sims, good hustle play. That, those are the effort plays that, that help you win. Mir Sims, six foot eight and a half, 240 pounds, has an NBA body. You said he's an NBA prospect. He certainly looks like it. Current Scott has that one rim out, but draws the foul. I was touching on earlier, Sims, when he gets the ball in the crowd and he's got a smaller man on him, I'd like to see him try to have a go-to move, generally a jump hook. Um, last possession, had to throw it out, end of clock, and they forced a bad shot, didn't get the basket. So, um, you know, every, hey, listen, every player in college basketball, every player in, in basketball can work on something, but that's, I'm nitpicking. He's, he's a fine prospect. Scott splits the free throws. Jacksonville back to work. Jacksonville really needs production from Santos, who didn't score in the first half, and also Dustin, uh, Dustin Barnes only had three points. Those are two of their top scorers. Is that the biggest key, trying to feed those guys, get them hot? I think so. I think when you're, you're a coach and you see your stat sheet at halftime, say, okay, these two guys are two of our leading scorers and they've, they've only had three and zero points. We've got to get them going to get into a rhythm. Sims open for three. Let's talk about rhythm. Sims is in rhythm. The basket is getting big for him. 13 points now for Amir Sims. Ten to shoot now for Jacksonville. Santos into a double. Now five to shoot. Barnes will take this three from the wing. Now that's pretty good defense. Scott ran out and chased Barnes off the three-point line, but Barnes did a good job. Shot fake, 
a little crab dribble, a little short dribble, so he can continue to shoot the ball behind the three-point line. That time McCallum got in the passing lane. And a turnover to Jacksonville. Open is Santos, but can't hit the three. Yeah, that's, that would be big for Santos and Jacksonville if he would have made that shot. Ten-point lead for Clemson. Just about three minutes gone by here in the second half, and Dawes traveled. 5th Clemson turnover in this one. Here's Norman. That floater is good. I love the baseline drive. Santos didn't see the corner open, and he was able to skip it to the weak wing. That's a tough pass. He's got great vision, good quickness. Newman stopped on the baseline. Cycles it out to Curran. Scott and finds the bottom of the net for three. Scott has given them a nice lift. Good three-point shooter at 35% coming into uh, uh, this game. He's playing with a lot of confidence. And he's got 11 points. Getting the start and making the most of it tonight. 11-point lead now for Clemson. Eight to shoot for the Dolphins. Three to shoot. Here's McCallum. Can't hit that one at the end of the shot clock. Near turnover, but Sims runs it down. Look showing that, that athleticism again. Look at the handle, though. Sims with the crossover yeah. in front of the defender. Now Scott on the drive. And a blocking the, foul. Yeah, call. I think he was in the circle. The foul coming up, but has it really been 50 years? We'll take a trip down memory lane when we come back. Tony Jasic in Jacksonville trying to channel a little Joe Williams and maybe Artis Gilmore of 50 years ago. This is the 50th anniversary of that magical Dolphins team that went 27-2 in the 69-70 season. They had five wins against nationally ranked teams, all in the top 15, by the way, four on the road to the NCAA Final Four, and then the national title game against UCLA. They beat St. Bonaventure, New Mexico State, and they were the only Final Four team with that, or there was the only Final Four, rather, that had three mid-major teams in it, and UCLA. And Jacksonville gets all the way there. They had a magical season, and they're honoring that this season in Jacksonville. And so all season long, they've been showing different parts of the careers of Artis Gilmore and some of the stars from that team. And what a team to look back on. And also those uniforms. The uniforms are pretty. I, I love the high socks and the silk shorts with the buckles. I don't know if they're, they're ever going to bring those back. I don't think that we'll probably ever see buckles or belts on basketball shorts again. I think elastic is here to stay. Yeah, yeah. But the Jacksonville underneath the numbers like that, that was an awesome uh, yeah, that, look. That, that, I like that look. That yeah. was cool. And I, that picture, Artis Gilmore, eight train, blocking that shot. And his head is on the rim. And his hand is up on the box. Unbelievable. John Newman knocks down the jumper. He's got seven in the game now. But Artis Gilmore in that season averaged 23 points and 22 rebounds. And think about that, 23 and 22. <laughs> and 23, that's good. I mean, in that era, that was a lot of points right. to be scored per game, but 22 rebounds a game. I know. I mean, hey, enough said. Artis Gilmore, the legend of that team, also Rex Morgan at 18 and 6 for that magical Jacksonville team of 69-70. I got to meet Joe Williams. He went on to coach at Florida State when they were in the Metro. Um, friend of mine, Dean Schaffer, 
who played at North Carolina. His dad was a, a great player at North Carolina, and ironically, his brother, David Chaffer, played here at Clemson for Bill Foster. They both ended up at Florida State and played for Joe Williams down there. What was Joe like? Joe, I shook his hand, said hello. That's about it. <laughs> the He's the aver it? average Joe. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Not so average that year, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Mo Arnold now for Jacksonville. And McCallum, a 12 to shoot, driving on current Scott. Great help by Sims. And now Kevin Norman misses the three. Bounces around till it gets to Kevin Mack. Newman, turnaround jumper, and a rebound to Sims, and a fresh shot clock, reset to 20 for Clemson. All right, let's see this pick and pop. He dives, must be a set play into a high low action. And that time, tried to go low to Sims, but threw the pass too yeah, high. Yeah, it's feeding the post is a lost art. Hey! You can't lead a man in the post. Coach Williams, Roy Williams would always say that. You don't want to lead a man in the post. Let's see some defense here. Sims is not only doing it on the offensive end. I love this help. Just cuts off the baseline drive, then the closeout. Johnny Newman's closeout. I think we really got to give credit to Mack and Newman. Their defense on the wing has made it very difficult for Destin Barnes to score. Deontay Wood at the free throw line and has that one rim out. John Newman, the sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Uncle played in the NBA for the New York Knicks, but was a great player at the University of Richmond. I don't think he had hair like that. John has great hair. Great hair. Uh, do you think he uses product? I don't know, but it is... Electric. It's great hair. It's much better than mine, I'll tell you that. Now Newman in the corner finding Scott out of bounds. No, yeah. Curran tried to save it right at the end there, but could not. Good box out by Trey Sides, who's the Phillipsburg, Kansas native. Now, I lived in Lawrence, Kansas for seven years as an assistant for Roy Williams. I had to look up. I had to Google Phillipsburg. You know how many people live in Phillipsburg? I actually looked this up. 660. 2,581. Huh. But 660 is not a terrible guess. No. That is north of Hayes, Kansas, north central Kansas, not far from the Nebraska border. So I asked him, I said, KU or K State? He said, K State. Hmm. Yeah. I stopped talking to him. I was like, was that the end of the conversation? Yeah. Actually, the ball, ball, his ball rolled over to me, and I said, KU, K-State. He said, K-State. I threw the ball to the corner. <laughs> Made him go get it. End of this conversation. End of, end of conversation. Two-time state champion quarterback for the football team. Yeah, this guy was the athlete of Phillipsburg. As you mentioned, two-time state champion in football, also a great basketball player. His parents are both coaches. Trey sides. And you say, okay, how does a guy get to Jacksonville from the middle of Kansas? Well, the assistant coach. Chad Eshbaugh. Chad Eshbaugh, yes, thank you. Um, junior college coach at Cloud County, knew of him, and uh, helped recruit him to Jacksonville, and also helped, he coached um, Amani Santos. So uh, that's how Coach Jazik got to know Trey Sides. You can find kids anywhere. Doesn't matter how small the town is they come from. If they're talented, you can find them. Kevin 
Jackson Max on the drive. And now a foul coming up. That time sides went down. We'll sort that out when we come back. Tevin Mack and Clemson, a 12-point lead. Forty nine thirty seven the lead for Clemson Trey sides on that last play before he went to a timeout called for the blocking foul they're trying to get flopping out of the game do you think this was a flop I thought it was a flop look at his feet all right he, he looked like a flop they actually called him Jamel Spear, Spearman called the reach in not the flop not as a block he called the reach in but I talked to Mikey's before they don't like to call flops but I think it's good because you need to get that out of the game. When I was growing up in the 70s, if you flopped and try to fake out the official, they call a technical foul on you. Now it's a warning and then a technical. Aaron Scott, the miss, and the rebound underneath. Second opportunity, good for Trey Jemison. He's now got five. That's a big boy rebound right there, man. <laughs> he Seven cleared footer. out some space. Yeah. And now a travel by Wood and a turnover back to Clemson. Watch this. He is high above everybody. Workman couldn't box him out. Power dribble just like you draw it up. Nice play there by Trey Jemison, who's come in and given some good minutes to Brad uh, Brownell in this one. I love his energy. To me, energy is so critical. Donnie Walsh, the longtime NBA executive, I worked for the Pacers for five years, and I, I used to get words of wisdom from him before games, and he said, you know, after all these years, the most important thing that we look for in players, energy. And he certainly brought it tonight. Arnold on the kick. Now you go to Workman now in the post against Jemison. Jacksonville trailing by 14. They want to get Destin Barnes loose, but he could not hit that three. Barnes, six points in the game. He's hit a couple of threes. The leading scorer for Jacksonville being held well below his season average. Really need to give Mack and Newman again credit for defense on Barnes. Chasing him off the three-point line. Santos on the drive. No second chance. No for Jacksonville. Here's the bottom line. Clemson has an easier time scoring than Jacksonville. They just, Clemson's making it very difficult on Jacksonville to get easy shots. And on the other side, Clemson's getting easier looks. And some of that is just due to the fact that they're more talented. And bigger. Five to shoot now for the Tigers. Scott with two, with one, and leans in for a foul. Yeah, that's a tough one. You try to go over the pick and roll, and you get squeezed. You know that Scott's going into the shot. It's almost better just to let him go, but that's a, that's a tough situation. Three-shot foul coming up here for Curran Scott. Our next All Access with Carolina Basketball Monday, 7 Eastern here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Your unprecedented All Access Pass gets you never-before-seen footage and sounds from UNC practices, workout games, other team-related activities. So make sure you check that out. Maybe you'll see a Matt Doherty cameo somewhere is it in there. All Access a little misnomer? I mean, is it really All Access? Like, is the camera, like... Does, does Coach Williams have a GoPro like on his, on head, his head and walking around the facility? So I, it, then technically it's not all access unless he's doing that. So I think we should request Coach Williams to have a GoPro on his head 24 hours a day to make it officially <laughs> all all access. I, I feel like you might be able to lodge that request. Uh, I don't think a, I can, but you have a, the clout. I'll send him a text like tomorrow, like maybe next month. How do you think that's going to go? Roy, I have this idea. Well, yeah. No, it, no, you not should go put well. a GoPro on your head. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go well, but good luck. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Here's Dawes. 
Now Tevin Mack in the corner for three. Smooth shot from Tevin Mack. You know, I think Tevin Mack really has let the game come to him against South Carolina. I thought he forced some things, but he's played a really good floor game, great defense, patient offense. And Clemson running away. They're on a 10-0 run over the last 332. Fifty six thirty seven Clemson the lead and you see the paw print those are everywhere here on this Clemson campus and a giant one in the middle of the floor Matt, during the timeout you were you were noticing things on the yeah, sideline. Yeah, here. both coaching staffs are old school with their timeouts. I love this right here where Brad Brownell doesn't have a manager with six chairs sprinting out to the middle of the court to huddle his team away from the sidelines. A couple of things, and I tried to institute this when I was in the Atlantic 10. When you go out to the center of the court, I think you, then the coaches get too close to the officials because they have an official under each basket and one at center court. The other thing is you risk injury by all the wet spots that that potentially could be on the floor you don't need to bring five mini chairs out to the lane for a timeout the anthony mccallum with the basket there nice up and under move that's interesting about the timeout it's just purely as a fan you're always watching and i kind of marvel at the managers that are hustling out there with the chairs i think it's ridiculous they don't need to. it's yeah. ridiculous now people say you want to get away from the noise, you want to huddle up. I just think it's it's unnecessary and it's risky because of the wet spots that could be under, in and around the lane due to that. Mo Arnold the miss on one end and now Clemson trying to extend its lead on the other end. And seesawing around a 10 point advantage for a while but now Clemson with the three make it a 20-point lead and Mack tries to do so misses but the rebound to Clemson and they get a fresh 20. Well that's a smart play by Scott obviously coach Brownell in his ear want to burn clock don't want to take quick shots to give Jacksonville any hope. And a travel right there Kayvon Moore. There's a Shot fake, shot fake, dribble penetration. What a reverse layup in a crowd. That, that was pretty sweet. Well, those kids are fired up because nothing but net is every Sunday, and it's our weekly basketball studio show. We'll preview the week. Look back at the best games from last week with highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide this week's show, 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. A little 2-3 zone from Brad Brunel's Clemson Tigers. He likes to show this once in a while. I thought it was pretty effective against South Carolina. South Carolina had to make some tough shots over hands against this defense. Boy, oh boy, Sims can really slide his feet. Seven seconds to shoot. Jacksonville will keep it. Sims has shown a lot of good things tonight. Look at the slide. Look at the slide here. Sorry to interrupt. Chasing Barnes off the three-point line. Sims closes out, stays in a stance, slides his feet and cuts off the baseline. Now look at him denying the inbound pass and getting a steal. I tell you what. I was an NBA scout for five years. I'd be scouting him very closely. He has a chance. And he brought the ball up the floor and now takes it in the post. Good pass. Dogs misses the three. Now a try on the other end. That one clangs off for McCallum. Brad Brownell wants to run some offense, wants to finish up the game. I think it's important that they finish this game up soundly. Don't get sloppy. You have a, a good Yale team coming in here in a couple of days. You want to finish off this portion of your season on a positive note. And that's certainly a positive note as Sims hits the bucket and will go to the line. Transfer a three-point play. 
Great seal here. Great seal. Use of his body. Scott with an excellent pass. The last time Scott threw it out of bounds, this time put enough air under it where it led him right into the layup and had the mismatch with Santos. Sims in this one, 15.6 of seven from the field, make it 16. Just a very smooth player. Smooth player from a really good school. I recruited out of that school before, Blue Ridge School in Virginia. Excellent, excellent school in a beautiful part of the country. Would have been interesting tonight with David Bell not playing for Jacksonville. You're just tuning in. He has a little bit of a knee injury, was limited in shoot around this morning, has not appeared in this game tonight. And, you know, Bell, a guy that I think would have really been an interesting matchup for Sims underneath. Transfer from Ohio State. It would have been a great matchup. The challenge for Bell would have been to guard Sims on the perimeter, but it would have been tough for Sims to score inside. 12-2 run for Clemson after the miss, and now Jacksonville trying to change that. Santos a three, too short. Santos has still not scored. 3rd leading scorer in the team, has not scored a point. Credit Clemson's defense. How about that play right there? Kayvon Moore coming in to throw it down. That's the athleticism Clemson has, especially at the wings. Moore is a long, athletic 3-4 man. He's like a volleyball player just coming in to spike it. Really oh, Arnold. Excuse me, Jordan, really good defense. I love the activity. You know, this is a game that Clemson could have taken off a little bit. You know, the holidays, students aren't here, lack of energy. They've come out with great focus and energy, and that's always evident in two areas. Turnovers and, and the squeaking of the sneakers on the defensive end, and I, you really hear the activity, the voices, and the shoes. On the, on the beautiful wood here at Little John Coliseum. Clemson has only committed seven turnovers tonight. They forced Jacksonville into 11. And a pretty clean game this, this evening. Not a lot of fouls. Clemson comfortably ahead, under three and a half minutes to go. Moore tried to get it to Sims. That's taken away by Workman. Derek Flowers was fouled there. Brings us to a timeout with just over three minutes left. Here's the missed shot by Mack. No box out on the weak side. Send it in, Jerome. <laughs> Amir Sims has shown us a lot of good things tonight, Matt. I tell you what, he's got what, what they call spread. He can spread the floor. He can score at, score at all three different levels. Around the basket here, mid-range, and the three-point. Uh, he, as I said earlier, is an NBA prospect. Because they always look for bigs that can stretch the floor and handle the ball. And his shooting ability, he shoots it comfortably. He's got great spin on the ball. Um, he's definitely an NBA prospect. Sims tonight, 16 points for the Clemson Tigers. After a traveling violation, we'll turn it back to Clemson. Jacksonville hasn't scored in over five minutes of play. Now this Tiger team going to move to six and five on the year and end a four-game losing streak. They had won five in a row, then losing four straight. This will be their first win in the month of December. And certainly, Tigers hope now with Clyde Trapp back to build a little momentum as they go back into ACC play after they take on Yale on Sunday. 
Well, I think that Trap, uh, what he gives, as I said earlier, he, he's a steadying influence, a calming influence on everybody. Everyone plays with a little bit more confidence when he's on the floor. For Jacksonville, this was going to be a tough matchup for them, especially with Dell out of the lineup tonight. They've won four of their last five coming in. I think a question fans might say, well, why are you playing zone at the end of the game? I think what Brad Brunell might be doing is just trying to work on things to get ready, not only for Yale, but for the remaining games in ACC play. Just improve. It's, it's a lot better to do it in a game, work on some things, than to do it in practice against your second unit. Sims had that one knocked out of his hands. Now Paul Grindy will check into the game for the Tigers. Another one of their graduate transfers. Came in from Vassar College. 6'10 graduate senior. They, they work hard in practice. They deserve an opportunity to play. Now the big thing as a coach, you don't want to get sloppy. Or you don't got, want guys to get selfish and all of a sudden hoist up a, a shot just because he wants to get in the scorebook. Well, looks like Mo Arnold has a cut on his arm out of the shot. Well, not many know more about the ACC than Mark Packer and West Durham. And Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, they will take you through the last decade with the top games, players, and plays. Packer and Durham Decade in Review Show right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. I was on their show last week uh, in the morning for an hour. We had a blast. They do a terrific job, a lot of fun, a lot of memories. Telling old stories about fights in Reynolds Coliseum, and I wanted to tell some lefty stories, but they do a terrific job, and they know the history better than anything with Mark Packer's dad, Billy, mm -hmm. playing at Wake Forest and doing ACC games for so long, and then West Durham's dad, Woody, was the voice of the Tar Heels for forever. Uh, he covered the games when I played and also when I was coaching. Their decade in review show will go through all sports, so should be great. And uh, I think Clemson football has had a pretty you good think? decade. You think? Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll be watching them uh, against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. That's going to be amazing. Oh, my watch. gosh. And you know what? Dabo Sweeney has the opportunity to be the underdog. No respect. He's going to play the no respect card. It's amazing to think that's even possible. <laughs> and how could someone not respect Clemson for they what they've done? They were on that bubble for a while, and then they don't respect ACC football. So he's playing that card, and I look for them to come out for the first punt punch. Some of the walk-ons into the game now, so you know that the crowd is hoping for someone to shoot. It's Parker Fox, the son of Cal basketball coach Mark Fox. And Grindy. Nice dive. Grindy off the dribble. Yeah. Now the jumper off target from O'Neill McBride, the freshman from Myrtle Beach. Another chance here. With 30 seconds to go, and the Clemson Tigers about to pick up. Their sixth victory of the year. I'd love to see Fox get a bucket. I'm, uh, good friends with Mark. He did a terrific job at Nevada and then at Georgia. And now he's got a work cut out for him at Cal. How about Paul Grindy just muscling his way to the basket for two? He took advantage of that big body of his in the post. Sure did. That one clangs off, and that'll do it. The Clemson Tigers winners here at home for the first time in the month of December. 68-39, to 39, the victory for Brad Brownell over Tony Jasek and the Jacksonville Dolphins.
In a game that was close for a while, but in the second half, Clemson ran away with it. Clemson did what they needed to do. I, I thought they really showed great discipline, not only on the offensive end. People think of discipline on the offensive end. I think they showed great discipline on the defensive end and made it very difficult for Jacksonville to get open looks. Held them to 39 points in this one, and they pick up victory number six on the season. When we come back, we will hear from the victorious Clemson Tigers here at the Little John Coliseum. Sixty-nine or sixty-eight to thirty-nine, Clemson with the victory over Jacksonville tonight here at Little John Coliseum. Alongside Matt Doherty, I'm Jordan Burnfield. Clemson ends the game on a 12-0 run, 21-2 run overall in the last 12 minutes of this game. And the Tigers certainly able to take advantage with Dave Bell unable to play today. They get a dominant victory. And one of the reasons why this Clemson Tigers team had such a dominant win, the guy that is now joining us here at the table, Clyde Trapp back in the lineup for Clemson after tearing his ACL just six months ago. Clyde, first of all, congratulations on being back on the court. And How did you feel being out there? I felt great. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I trust my knee. I trust the doctors. I, I feel like they fixed it, so I go out and play every possession with it all I got. So. When you go back out on the court tonight, what were the kind of feelings running through your mind having not played basketball in such a long time? It was definitely a long time coming. You know, I, uh, I respect everybody on this team and our program, so I worked really hard to get back. And to come out here and play for the first time for my junior season was, was definitely a blessing. Clyde, what do you think that you brought to this? You didn't play a lot of minutes, obviously. You knew that coming in. What do you think you brought to this team uh, tonight? Uh, just leadership. Yeah, um, all through my process, I've been trying to be a great leader to all the guys. You know, uh, Al, which is a freshman, trying to be in his ear all the time. You know, it's rough coming in, playing a freshman, playing 30 minutes a game. So I just try to be there for him. And tonight, I just feel like I just was in everybody ear. So, yeah. Where did you learn how to throw the one hand pass off the dribble with either hand? <laughs> it's, e it's easier. It's hard to do yet with your strong hand, but you did that with your left hand a couple times too. Well, growing up, I was right-handed, so my parents always told me to work on my left hand, so it turns out my left hand started being better than my right hand, so it just came second age. Good coaching, good parenting. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, Clyde, thanks so much for joining us here at Thank the table. You. Congrats on being back on the floor. Thank you. Thank That's you. Clyde Trapp, point guard, back in the lineup for Clemson, and the Tigers pick up a win. We'll talk to Coach Brownell coming up next. to 39 Clemson the victory over Jacksonville tonight and joining us now is the victorious head coach of the Tigers Brad Brownell and coach I think you have to be excited about what Clyde Trapp was able to give you tonight we've talked about it a lot in the broadcasters having him back on the floor six months after tearing up his knee and he looked smooth he did a really nice job and and he just kind of settles our team uh, he's a guy who knows what we're looking for and understands uh, how we want to do some things and and really it it Really helps Alamir Dawes a good deal. He, he doesn't need to be playing as many minutes as he played. Uh, tonight was nice. He played 28. Clyde got about 12. And it also helps other guys like Curran Scott got to just kind of stay over at the two spot. And uh, just helps us with rhythm and a little bit of substitution patterns and all those kinds of things. Tell, tell us about, um, it's obvious to talk about Sims because he had such a good game offensively and he showed his whole package. Yep. But Mac and, and um uh, Newman, their defense right. I thought was critical because, um, you know, they, they, they did. You held Jacksonville yeah, twenty nine percent yeah, field we, goal percentage. We, we did a much better job. I thought early, you know, maybe our guys didn't believe that Norman was a good three point shooter. He knocked a couple threes in on us. Uh, we made a slight adjustment at halftime. I thought we guarded him a little bit better in the man, and then we played a little bit of zone just to uh, when we got the lead to slow the tempo of the game a little bit. I thought that was effective and. Uh, you know, Tevin helps us offensively. He can shoot the ball. He stretches the court, uh, does some good things there. John had a tough game in terms of fouls. He was in foul trouble early and then battled back and did some better things in the second half. And, um, you know, we're, we're a guy, we, we need everybody. Uh, you know, Amir had a great game and has played well for us, but we need everybody uh, to help us score. That's, that's the area where we struggle a little bit. 11 points in the second half allowed by your team. That is the fewest in the second half under Coach Brownell. So pretty cool tonight for your team. But I want to go back to your offense because you are talking about Sims a little bit earlier, and Matt was talking about his prospects at the next level. He's just so smooth underneath. And talk about the impact that he was able to make. Well, the best thing about Amir is he's a really smart 
guy. I mean, he just he can figure things out. I think you know I talk to our players all the time about can you take what we practice and then when the, the gun goes off and it's five on five and you drill things, do you see that? And with him, it, it's just easy for him. He, he has no problem, and so he doesn't get sped up as much. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He's shooting the ball uh, from the perimeter. He can drive it a little bit. He posts it. Uh, he's the guy that we play through a lot. He's uh, learning how to be a primary player because he's been like the fourth guy for the last couple of years, but uh, really happy with his development. Well, Coach Brownell, congrats on the win tonight. You've got Yale coming up on Sunday, and then you go right back into the ACC. So uh, a nice win for you guys tonight, and congratulations. Well, thanks a lot. We got our hands full on Sunday. <laughs> All right. Well, Coach Brownell and his Clemson Tigers pick up the victory over the Jacksonville Dolphins tonight. They improved to 6-5 and five on the season. And like we said, they've got Yale coming up on Sunday. So not a lot of time to rest, but they will get their opportunity on Sunday. As for Jacksonville, they fall to 7-7 seven and seven on the season. And they will be in this state taking on South Carolina State coming up next. So, Matt, this was a fun one tonight. Enjoyed working with you, and Clemson gets the win. Likewise, Jordan. I hope we get to work again soon. Absolutely. So, for Matt Doherty, my name is Jordan Burnfield. Thank you so much for watching here in Clemson where the Tigers pick up a 68-39 victory over Jacksonville. Coming up next, it's the Huddle Bowl preview special. Coverage and analysis of all 10 of the ACC's bold bound teams and matchups. Good night from Clemson.